let's talk engine in my first video on the first test drive of the black rd50 i mentioned that these uh, bikes have a i think it was 2.9 horsepower engine but uh, that was wrong actually that's for the uh, models after the dx model that came with a cast iron cylinder this one has a aluminum cylinder and these actually went up to six and a half horsepower so these aluminum cylinders are the most desirable uh, back in the day uh, and still actually and they're also the most rare the previous owner uh, started port polishing which uh, at first I thought it was a good idea and maybe continue this route but actually due to the rarity of these parts I'm just going to clean this up a bit and leave it pretty much stock because if I mess something up finding a new aluminium cylinder will be extremely hard so that's for the cylinder we have the piston head apparently there are some rubber tubes in this head i have no idea why this is actually the first time i see this is this some kind of old racing trick i don't know the previous owner of which i bought these bikes rick if you're watching this cheers um he was actually on the hunt for speed sometimes uh, with these bikes he used to race some motorcycles as well his son a friend of mine uh, does it now and uh, he's getting pretty good at it so uh, that's that was his idea of uh, polishing and porting the cylinder uh, another not so fun discovery that i've had yesterday was uh, he removed the kickstarter and plugged the hole up probably for uh, weight reduction or maybe the kickstarter was just broke because i can't find any in the part supply this so this will be another part i need to source i've already went online and uh, it won't be an easy task other than that the inside of the cylinder the walls they have some wear marks but nothing too bad actually they, uh, i feel no scratches nothing that worries me cylinder as well oh uh, please don't break needle bearing the cylinder as well looks all right it came pretty close to overheating i think or maybe this is just uh, typical for these piston and cylinders i'm not quite sure other than that the engine looks all right i've checked bearings for play there's no play at all the clutch seems okay the connection rod has some rust on that but that's no no big deal <laughs> yes some brand new rear shocks these are not 100% original these are some remanufactured ones but they'll work and that's the most important thing cool let's fit the other one there you have it a set of brand new shocks that's another job done on the list let's continue with the next one so the first thing i think i'm going to do with the cylinder is to maybe clean these edges up uh, the port itself actually looks all right you can see here he already went to town on them So I sanded it down. Hope you can see this. Looks all right. There's a, a strange spot on the top there, but I'm uh, scared to grind it down any further. But I think it'll be fine. It looks worse than it feels. 
when you rub it with your finger it's not that bad so now let's just give this cylinder a good wash So I gave the engine block a little bit of a clean, there's still some parts in the ultrasonic cleaner, looks alright, it's not too bad. Let's see if we can mount this block in the frame so we can build it up in there. It will probably be a lot easier to fit it in without cylinder and cylinder head. It's a bit smaller and it weighs a bit less. Uh, nothing major has to be done, I've checked all the bearings, everything looks fine, there's no play. So let's fit this in. I'm missing one bolt for the engine, so I have to check my parts bins again. There we go, the block is in. So after cleaning up the port work, uh, or the polishing of the ports, I gave it a bit of a clean to get out all the metal shavings. Now there's only one thing left to do uh, with this cylinder, and that is to surface the mating surface for the cylinder head, and also Try to flatten this side that fits the reed valve for the carburetor. So the way you flatten a surface on these cylinders, you can maybe get them to a shop that does this, but I don't think they will do these kind of cylinders. You, uh, oh, you don't have to, but usually I color them with some marker. Just so we can see where the high and low spots are. So to flatten the surface, I use a piece of glass, uh, which I tape a piece of sandpaper. This is 400 grit. I use glass because I know glass is flat. So we just get some uh, cutting fluid. And then we just go, go in circles. And here you can see the red, uh, where the red is still visible, these are low spots. So we have to actually grind all these away with the sanding paper. It's not too bad. This is actually the markings of the copper gasket that goes uh, in between the head. Here you can see almost all the red is gone. That means we are getting close to a flat surface. Just a little bit of a low spot on this side, but I think it's fine. With the copper gasket, this will be perfectly sealed. I've already went ahead and did the cylinder head as well, turned out pretty good. This way, with the copper gasket, uh, the head will seal perfectly and we won't have a leaky head, because that's not something you want. Only thing that left to do on this cylinder is to do the exact same on this side, uh, where the reed valves sit. A flat surface for the reed valves. This cylinder is looking pretty good. I was about to install the inlet manifold onto the cylinder, but I just noticed this. So this plastic piece mounts to the carburetor. And here you can see a lot of aluminium casting uh, that blocks the entry to the cylinder. So what I'm going to try and do is try and grind this away so you can make a smooth surface. Actually port matching this.
there we go. The port has been matched. Now all we have to do is uh, hit it with some sandpaper to smooth out the surface. There ports have been matched, smoothed and cleaned. You actually don't want these surfaces too smooth. You don't want them to uh, have a, have a uh, mirror finish because you still want a little bit of turbulence for the air to mix with the fuel. Uh, if you have them too smooth, it actually might cause a bad mixture. So I think this is perfect. So we got our freshly port matched and uh, surfaced inlet manifold. We have this uh, sandwich of parts, so a gasket, the reed valves, another gasket and the actual inlet manifold itself. So this can go back onto the cylinder. Don't need to go all the way up to three Uggaduggas, just uh, one Uggadugga is fine. I'm going to take the razor blade and uh, cut some of this excess gasket material so it looks a bit neater. Looks a lot better. Here we have a fresh RD50 cylinder ready to be mounted. Let's start assembling this engine back together. We'll go ahead and start with the cylinder and the piston. Uh, first I'm going to start with adding a little bit of two-stroke oil into the crankcase because this uh, engine has been sitting for a while. I don't think it will be a bad idea of just adding a little bit of oil. This will burn out no problem. So when cleaning up this piston I actually noticed it has a bit of pitting. So I think this piston has seen better days but there is no major damage on the edge. So I think this will be okay. I hope so. I don't know if you can see this but the, the, there is a little arrow on this piston. This is always the exhaust side. And if you really want to be sure on, uh, on these bikes we have two transfer ports in the piston that match the intake on the cylinder, these. As you can see, these match up. So exhaust side is that way. persuasion with a screwdriver so it's back at the end perfect it's tight now for the little I don't know g-clip <laughs> be careful not to lose these and definitely not drop them in the crankcase so let's see if we can do this Click. And there you go. This is in. This piston is not going anywhere. I hope. <laughs> the gasket. First gasket. And now for the tricky part. So for the piston rings, there is a little tab here on the piston. And these split rings, uh, the opening has to go on the tab, like so. And there are two rings with two tabs. 
That's very important when you install the cylinder on top of the piston. Because if you mess this up, the piston rings won't last very long. First one is in. Now let's go to the other side. So I can see the second one. I think it's actually already there because it wants to go in. Yes. Oh, there we go. You can now see clearly the transfer ports on the piston match the transfer ports on the cylinder. Now just for good measure, check if the piston rotates freely. The rings don't get snagged on the ports. Seems to be working all right. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of two-stroke oil again. Just so we don't start up completely dry. The head gasket. Uh, you have a dimple on the uh, um, bottom side and a little hump on the top side. The hump should go on the top. Perfect. Now our freshly resurfaced cylinder head. So a fun fact about the cylinder head, I've, uh, I've had to ask a friend because I didn't know, these rubber tubes actually came out factory and that's to prevent the aluminium uh, to go singing uh, when they are at high R RPM because aluminium has a tendency to start ringing or singing or however you would like to call it. And these rubber tubes should prevent or at least lower that. The head is on, here just uh, in a couple of stages and uh, tighten them in a cross pattern. One and a half Ugga Dugga should be fine. Now just one thing left, it's brand new spark plug. I always use uh, NGK spark plugs, I've had very good experiences with them. For these bikes I use a uh, B7HS, I've been using them on all of my bikes. Alright, pretty cool. It's a beefy cylinder, I like it. It's actually starting to look like an engine again.